Good morning, Penny Pierce. Good, Good morning. Good Thank morning you. to you. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us in Sube La Vida. And I would like to talk about the intuitive way. The intuition is something very important, but we don't recognize it. Yes, well, I think everybody <laughs> uses it, you know, but um, we don't often notice when we're using it because it's so natural, you know. Um, so I, I wrote the intuitive way, gosh, like it's 1997, I think, mm -hmm. and it's still selling, you know, it, it's a course on intuition development. So, uh, and I think that's the first stage really of learning about personal transformation. Okay. Like all the changes that we're going through personally and as a society today, mm -hmm. it's really all based on intuition. And in fact, I've been calling it that we're shifting from the information age, which is the left brain, mm -hmm. into the intuition age, which is the right brain and the left brain and the heart and the body and the field of energy around you, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. we're moving into a totally different kind of perception, but very strongly based on intuition. Can you explain me a little better about the left brain? The what does the left brain and the right brain? Yeah, the the left brain is what we we usually use consciously during the day, and it has to do with um, defining, analyzing its logic. Mm -hmm. It's has language. Okay. So if you're talking to yourself inside your head, you know you're you using mm -hmm. your left yes. brain. Okay. It also um, it's kind of there to, once it defines everything, it tends to lock it down and not let it change because it doesn't like change. Once okay. it gets everything defined, it wants it to stay that way. So a lot of the negative comments that we have in our head are coming from the left brain. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't do that or mm -hmm. I can't do that or, mm -hmm. you know, all that that keeps you from um, changing and fluidity and growth. That's mm -hmm. the negative use of the left brain. Mm -hmm. And I think when we get a very attached to um, the left brain way of seeing the world, we actually identify with it then. And that becomes the ego. Okay. You know, we're, we're separated from ourselves as a spiritual being. We're just in a very small amount of ourselves, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yes, yes. Perfectly. So the left brain is useful for making things conscious, but it's not the boss. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh it should not be running the show because it doesn't have access to new information. It oh. uses what worked in the past, brings it into the present, repeats it. Now the right brain is all about total immersion mm -hmm. into the unified field of energy and consciousness, okay. or you would, you know, and it's un unlimited access. Mm -hmm. Everything's possible. Mm -hmm. It's the imaginal realm. Mm -hmm. where we use imagination, which mm -hmm. I think is the real reality, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so it is um, like you know everything at once. But you need the left brain to interrupt the right brain okay. so that we can know, you know, have a focus. To bring it back. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and then we bring it back and we use it and then we let go. Okay. And then we go back into the right brain, intuition, mm -hmm. direct knowing okay. to access new things that are fresh and new and, and appropriate for the present moment. So, yeah, the right brain is very much about intuition. How can we stop the left brain from this negative thinking? Well, the first thing is stop talking. Stop talking. Yeah. Stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. stop the internal yeah. dialogue, yeah. you know, get quiet. And we don't do that very much today with mm -hmm. our cell phones and yeah. all the screen addiction that we have. Mm -hmm. It's like become centered in yourself, get quiet, mm -hmm. and be, be mm -hmm. instead of doing and thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then you start to actually connect with what's around you. You can feel into things, mm -hmm. not think logically about things. Mm -hmm. Don't describe or name things. Mm -hmm. Be with it. It's yes. all alive. Yes. And then you have this communion experience rather than feeling separate from what you're observing. Mm -hmm. you know, and that quiets you down. And it also then brings up um, the ability to feel compassion, mm -hmm. you know, and wisdom and greater knowledge mm -hmm. that isn't um, found on computers. No. <laughs> no. 
but I, am, that, I don't know how to recognize it. Well, I think we have to make an agreement with ourselves. Okay. And first of all, we have to identify ourselves properly. That mm -hmm. is, I am not my left brain. Okay. I am the soul. I am the soul. I'm here now. I'm looking out from these eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a, out there somewhere, like a balloon you have on a string. You know, people say, I have a soul. Mm -hmm. But no, you are the soul. Mm -hmm. So if you identify as a spiritual being in a physical body, now that changes the way you think. Yes. You know, and then you, you think, well, wait a minute, I know a lot at that level. Mm -hmm. I'm connected to everything and all other souls. So I have a lot of help. I have a lot of knowledge and whatever I need, I can, I can access it. Mm -hmm. So it changes the, the sense of feeling limited into feeling much more empowered. That's the first thing. And then I think that you need to find that actual feeling state in your body. I call it your home frequency, mm -hmm. you know, like when you are the soul and you like yourself and you are having a good time, you know, like a child playing, mm -hmm. you feel joyful, you feel uh, creative, mm -hmm. you know, optimistic. Now that's your home frequency, basically. Everybody's is a little bit different, but it's sort of the same. And, um, and if you can remember that feeling state, like take, I call it taking a, a frequency snapshot mm -hmm. of that state of being so that when you get out of it and you get, you know, angry or frustrated or upset in some way, you can catch yourself and then say, wait, I, this is not the way I like to feel. And then you come back to center, you breathe, you get back into your state, you think yourself into it again and now make your decisions. Mm -hmm. But in terms of finding out which thing to listen to the agreement is that you will notice what you notice you'll pay attention to the you know you may notice a whole different set of things than i would notice if we were in the same situation mm -hmm. you know it's we're making reality real to ourselves in our own way mm -hmm. by what we notice so i call that your inner perceiver mm -hmm. there's a function of your own mind that makes you notice certain things and then that's what helps you uh, that's what helps things become real so i trust everything i notice right and i i try to be very conscious of this and it's i guess it's a mindfulness practice mm -hmm. but um you know and i say well why am i noticing this mm -hmm. <laughs> you know if you get an intuition and you you don't use it then you notice later that you should have yeah. used it yeah exactly. like why was i why was i noticing this what did it feel like when i noticed it how did it feel like when i denied it i call that being counterintuitive mm -hmm. when you override your intuition and don't use it you're going against your intuition it's not it doesn't mean what most people think it means to be illogical counterintuitive is when you don't listen to your intuition so there are certain body states that happen when you do those things and you can start to recognize that's a very subtle feeling state you know mm -hmm. and and i that's we have to read our bodies a lot i don't know if that makes sense you know completely, yeah. Completely, yeah. completely yeah 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 what i was thinking is so in, intuition is a, it's a field of, of energy yeah when you're just in your left brain, mm -hmm. your energy is pretty much contracted okay. around beliefs, definitions, fears, you know, things that have to be this way, this is the way life is, you know, mm -hmm. um, and energy doesn't flow. That mm -hmm. means your soul, you, cannot express freely because there's a big kind of a filter over you or a wet blanket on mm -hmm. top of you that you can't get through. Mm -hmm. So intuition opens the the fluidity or the flow of energy right and then you get access to energy and con energy and consciousness are connected they're like two sides of the same coin mm -hmm. if you have higher frequency energy you get higher consciousness and vice versa mm -hmm. you know so um you know basically if you allow your energy to start flowing that means You'd be more open to surprise, mm -hmm. to, you know, vary your routine, to, to, you know, have change. 
and watch what feels more like your home frequency or less like your home frequency mm -hmm. and choose what feels deeply comfortable not easy necessarily mm -hmm. right that's comfortable because um, sometimes easy easy things are not comfortable mm -hmm. actually um, and so you but it means you have to really pay attention to all the little subtle things that you're sensing during the day and if you're in your cell phone constantly you don't notice your body mm -hmm. I think we really need time out from our electronics sometimes to look, feel <laughs> things. We don't have the time to share and to feel the presence of the other persons. Yes, I know. And, uh, you know, I think reading your own body teaches you how to read other people's bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, and that means you can tell when they're safe or dangerous or whether they're lying or telling the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and you start to be able to use your intuition then to determine like things like timing mm -hmm. on something. Should I do it now or wait? No, not quite yet. Why not yet? Oh, I'm missing some information. Or why not yet? Oh, that other person isn't ready yet. You know, and, and you can get a sense of the good reasons behind mm -hmm. your intuitions, you know. But you've got to trust it and then kind of go down into it and 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 explore you know mine go into the mining of the the earth you know and and get your um, information that's underneath the surface I, I understand that you have courses of intuition yeah occasionally I used to do it a lot now not as much um, but uh, the co the book itself is a course mm -hmm. but like I, I did some works in Europe last year mm -hmm. and the year before mm -hmm. I haven't done too much in the United States for a couple of years so maybe yeah. we should do one <laughs> <laughs> yeah we could <laughs> and then, you know that was the that was the first book so there are 10 books now and and yes. you know I've moved much more into an in-depth understanding of what personal transformation and societal transformation mm -hmm. is really, mm -hmm. you know, and how does it work? How can you do it? What happens afterwards? You know, yeah. those were are things I've been very interested in pursuing. That is so beautiful. Now we will talk about your book, The Present Moment. Is this something similar as the mindfulness? I, the pres I got the idea to write a day book about intuition and clarity. How do we stay conscious during the day? Mm -hmm. And so this is really um, a follow-up to the intuitive way, where every day has um, an exercise that you can do, an affirmation of, or a statement of something to pay attention to that day, and then a story that demonstrates that idea. And you can use it every day in a in a sequential way, or you can just open it up, you know, like an oracle thing, and just read wherever you want to read. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it is out of print now, but it's in ebook format at this point. I I redid it in ebook. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so it's available. That is great. Now, because we are talking about the present moment, uh, this is something that is like a feeling good, or what is present moment? Well, I don't know good, but at least um, even if something is frustrating or you have a snag and things aren't flowing, and that's just information, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's data about something that you're not understanding, mm -hmm. something you need to, to bring up to the surface of your consciousness and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I don't think about these things too negatively anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, I try to look through the surface and find out what's why is this occurring in my reality, you know? So then that helps me stay cheerful, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think, you know, everybody has a way of feeling their own home frequency. And my, mine is cheerfulness, I think. When, mm -hmm. Whenever I get out of it, I try to go back to that simple state. But there are other, like sincerity mm -hmm. is a good state, you know, um, sweetness. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are a lot of high but very ordinary kinds of consciousness mm -hmm. that will open your heart and get you back into the present moment. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I don't know about happiness, but I think when you are the soul, that you tend to be joyful. joyful I mean, naturally, exactly. mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of like you sort of feel the cosmic joke mm -hmm. and, and you're ready to laugh mm -hmm. pretty much any time, you mm -hmm. know, and 
and yet you're serious at the same time about being creative and doing things well in the world. What can we do to be in the present moment? Sometimes I call it stop and drop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like stop your left brain mm. chatter, projecting mm. into the future, past, into other people's realities. Come back into the middle mm. of yourself. Drop in. Mm. Get in your body. Breathe. You know, get into your home frequency. So that's centering, really. Mm -hmm. you know, get in the middle of your ball of reality. And then notice things around you. What is happening? What is occurring? This is all part of you. Mm. You're connected to everything. And the ball can expand. And then you can be connected to more, more people, more trees, whatever you want, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and then you realize really how big you are, mm. how much potential you have. And I think that is the centering and getting quiet in your body is the key thing today especially it's so crazy out there. Mm -hmm. You have to create a still point in the middle of the field of energy. And how do we know when we are not doing the right thing? Well, I think that one thing you can pay attention to is, I call it your truth and anxiety signals. Mm -hmm. These are things in your body that when you hear the truth, you sort of do, you, you recognize it in a certain physical way. Um, most people don't pay attention to that. But often people say, I got chills. You know, mm -hmm. like energy came up and went out my arms and mm -hmm. whoo, you know, mm -hmm. like that. Um, or uh, if it's anxiety, which could be falsehood or a lie, for instance, when you hear a lie or when something's not right for you or not safe for you, mm -hmm. there's a contracting often in the solar plexus area, mm -hmm. you know, like adrenal area. And it feels like a fist. Mm -hmm. You tighten up or you get cold. Your hands and feet can get cold, you know, or you just feel heavy, solid. But when you hear the truth, you warm up, the energy moves up your spine, you feel like energy spreading out, you know, a lot of different signals. Some people say, oh, it came together like this and click down the middle of the body and settled in. So if you can find your own truth and anxiety signal, mm -hmm. then you can read that when you make decisions. Even about what to eat, you know, do I feel like this or this, mm, you know, and one lets you open, one makes you close more. So play with that every day, even on small decisions, you know, um, that's really a key thing to learn to, to trust your body. That is wonderful. Thank you, yeah. Penny. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>